Uh, Vipers are cars for crazy people. Let's go drive. Come on now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to feel that in the car. Uh, holy freaking fuck. And then it does a burnout at 5,500 in the third year. One hour of track time. Power mirrors don't work. Air conditioning doesn't work. Airbag doesn't exist. A common issue as you age is losing your hair. It happens earlier for some people, later for others, but there's one common theme. It stinks and a lot of guys don't seek treatment when they should. That's where today's video sponsor, Keeps, comes in. The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit the doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy and deliver your medication every three months so you can say goodbye to the pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why nearly 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. So if you notice you're starting to lose your hair, visit Keeps.com SSR. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash SSR. There's a link below in the description with a special offer on the other side of it for you, and you can start your treatment sooner rather than later. Look who's back, everybody. Got two yellow cars here. And the one I'm talking about is my AMG GT. It's been out for a hot, hot, hot minute. And it was because this headlight and then this bumper cover and part of the fender. But the problem we had with this car was that A, the insurance was a nightmare. So now, this is a situation that took way too long for a repair that I thought could have been done in a week, and it probably could have been, except Mercedes is like some of these other companies. And a lot of companies now are like, I want to say unfairly naming parts as like structural, right? There, there is a bracket in here, and if you remember from the other video, there's a bracket in here that just holds the headlight on. It bolts onto the car, just holds the headlight. It's a very simple bracket. That's considered frame. It can only be repaired by a certified Mercedes-Benz shop. Now, what does that mean? That means some guy spent 200 grand to be a certified Mercedes shop, and he charges significantly more than he should for a repair. And that's one of those things I've had that with Tesla. This can only go to a Tesla certified shop. It's a $1,500 repair. They charge eight grand. So they're able to milk the crap out of it because they're certified. Not because their work's any better, but they're certified. So this, we brought it to this other guy. So we had uh, Krakow's collision was fixing the car. He did the paint, he did everything, except for that one bracket. And we brought it to this guy for this one bracket, which should have been done in a couple hours. It sat there for like 10 days. So I lost another 10 days for that. And then that bill came to like eight grand. And I'm like, come on, man. Like it's one bracket, but they were able to do that because they're certified. So what did we learn? get certified and you can charge whatever the hell you want and that's all profit. So you're buying into this sort of monopoly of like all the work has to go through you. It's not like you have a choice to which body shop you go to. You have to get certain repairs done by this. And I'm cool with that for, I don't know, like a, a smashed up car that structural, structural integrity is called in the question, but a headlight bracket or like a radiator bracket, come on. And we had that now with um, Ferrari and, and just for example, think of a, uh, a McLaren or something that has carbon fiber, like the monocoque is, is damaged, right? Imagine that. That you'd probably want to send out and have a authorized or a experienced shop fix. So you know that it's good. If it ever gets in an accident after that, you know that it's done properly and that the car is going to act as it was designed in saving people's lives. A headlight bracket, on the other hand, should not be. So this car took way too long, and the reason it took so long to even get started was the insurance company couldn't get in touch with the person that crashed, right? So this car was at a light. Uh, my customer was parked at a light. He got backed into by somebody who was drunk, but like 
that's what happens. Somebody drunk backs in the car, tow hitch or something like that through the, through the headlight. And fast forward, we tried to subrogate through this company and they're like, well, we can't get in touch with our insured. I'm like, well, great. And they sent us a letter and it was 30 days have gone by, 45 days have gone by. And it's like, how long do you need? Like it would do if they never pick up the phone, do you just never pay the claim? And fast forward about two months and they finally said, if we can't get them to respond within the next week, we are going to pay the claim because they are responsible for paying the claim. Police report, everything has them as the responsible party. But they wanted the statement from their insured validating that. Like, well, yes, like uh, I did back into them or whatever. And if you're drinking and driving, you're probably not the most responsible person in the world. But insurance companies, once they write your policy, whether you're irresponsible or not, they've got to cover that stuff. And that's how this thing dragged out for a while. And they ultimately just said, look, look, we'll get to it. Uh, if they don't respond, we'll, that's, and we've given them enough uh, contact attempts to validate. And if they have a problem with us paying the claim, they're not going to be able to have a leg to stand on because we're going to now pay it out because we're just going to assume that they're not going to have a problem with that because they're not voicing any objection to it, which is a better way of approaching it. So this car took far too long, and now I'm going to have to go after loss of use on this car because I lost this car for almost two months, if not more than two months. It may have been more than two months. But then that brings you into a whole other thing of loss of use. How hard is it to get loss of use? Now, if this guy doesn't want to pay loss of use or if the insurance policy specifically excludes it for whatever reason, we're stuck. And that, that's just one of the risks of the business, unfortunately is that we then have to go after the actual person who damaged the vehicle and they could be absolute deadbeats. If it's somebody that has zero money, do we not go after them if they're deadbeats? No, of course we do. We get the full judgment for the full amount of money and we just let that ride out for a while. And that's now coming into play multiple times in, in my year because there's another uh, claim that I'm gonna have to go after significant loss of use where a car was down and why am I entitled to loss of use? Because I was paying for this car, well, I own the car, but I was paying for the insurance on this car and I lost revenue on this car. Now there is a common misconception in the world and, and I guess I'm giving all other rental car companies and everybody else on the planet uh, case law that's significantly gonna help you if you ever try to claim loss of use for anything. Loss of use is not loss of revenue. Simple as that, that is, that is state supreme court Colorado, New Jersey, all of this has been covered already. I'm not going to tell you the cases, you do your own work, but I know them off the top of my head. Loss of use, and I, I was even an uh, expert witness at trial for this. Loss of use is the loss of your ability to use your asset, right, in the condition that it was in. That means if I can't walk into my garage, loss of use could be I want to walk in the garage and I just want to pet my fender, right? You should be able to do that. That's my asset, my vehicle to do that with. It's not, well, you're a rental company and let's see your fleet utilization logs and we're not gonna pay you. You don't have to do anything. We're just then gonna sue you and go after that. I'm entitled to being compensated for the, and it's easy as a rental company, for the daily rental rate on what a replacement car would cost. And since I'm one of the companies that rents and pretty much the company that rents the cars around here, uh, they have no problem accepting my daily rental pricing as a loss of use figure. And I've been on, uh, as I said, an expert witness of trials for this stuff. And now, so this car, ideally, we should be going after the, or we will be going after the insurance company for this car times the 649 a day times the amount of days it was down, which is almost two months. Now, if you start doing the math, that's like $35,000. Is that what the lost revenue is if the car went out full time? No, the utilization is never going to be 30 days unless it goes out on monthly rentals. But even at that, you're looking at, I'm still out the door. I mean, I'm out tens of thousands of dollars by not renting this car out for two months. And is that fair? And another guy who, and I guess I can get into this in a different video, is like, well, you got your car fixed. I'm like, well, that's great. I also had to pay insurance while that car was down. I, didn't, I wasn't able to rent it. I didn't have a replacement vehicle in which to use while my car was down. So I'm incurring losses. I'm entitled to recover those. And how we approach this is whether somebody is um, viable to go after or not, if, if they don't have any money to go after, we'll just get the default judgments. They're not going to defend themselves uh, if, they've, if there's nothing to go after. They're just going to be like, whatever. 
I'm going to need a default judgment. Just say for 40 grand in loss of use against the person that backed into this car and they're going to stare at that for a while. Then after that, it's going to accrue interest from the day that it's a uh, judge writes it as, as viable. And that's going to ride out for however many days, weeks, months, years. And that's going to always follow this person. It's always like if they're alive for 40 years, they leave their house to their kids. Guess what? Now you owe $90,000 for not paying for this judgment that's following you. So you're either going to never have any assets in your name for your entire life or anything you inherit, you win the lottery. Guess what? Boom, that money's coming out. That's going there. That's why we don't just let it go. Sometimes, and I remember uh, an old landlord, he's like, look, sometimes I do things for me and sometimes I do things for my kids. And if I don't see a dollar of this, but 40 years from now, my kids get a hundred grand because the, because this judgment finally caught up to somebody or their family or their lineage, that they don't just escape that. Uh, the only way to possibly escape that would be a bankruptcy, but I don't even know if a bankruptcy, I'm not an attorney, if a bankruptcy allows you to escape uh, defaulting on something probably does, but like to file for the bankruptcy, it's you're really you're really taking the extra mile, going the extra mile on that. But at the end of the day, if the insurance company comes back and says like, look, we're gonna we're gonna offer you X, like we're not gonna give you 60 days loss of use, we'll give you 35. I'll take it any day of the week. Easy money is better than hard money, and chasing people is no fun. But this car is back. It took far longer than it should, mainly because of this bracket but uh it is now back up and running and i think i'm gonna sell this i think this time of year it's time to get rid of this i want to sell hmm my range rover wherever it is i'm going to sell my range rover by another one and then i'm going to sell my bentley and buy another one uh bentley spring this one something else in the spring and i'm going to sell the range rover so i'm going to get rid of those three cars uh, free up some cash because I own a couple of them in cash at the moment and yeah just make it through the winter have a good time and not carry too much excess inventory throughout the winter that's part of it part of getting through the COVID times is not fleeting up too much and having too much extra overhead uh, it's nice to be able to scale up and down and getting rid of cars in the winter buying new ones in the spring makes a tremendous amount of sense so welcome back Mercedes if you're interested in buying it wholesale it is Rob Ferretti, thank you for watching. Uh, shoot me an email if you want to buy it. Rob at GothamDreamCars.com, Rob at SuperSpeeders.com, whatever you want. And I will talk to you tomorrow. The wholesale number is pretty accurate. Um, but gorgeous car, about to go bye-bye, out of my life. But we had, we had a good run with it. So that was the first, the first damage at all, and it was very minor. So I will catch you next time. Rob Ferretti, over and out. So you guys are familiar with my other company, Adventure Drives, right? Well, we're going to be going to Scotland in October. We're going to be doing Scotch distilleries, playing golf at St. Andrews if you want to do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's going to be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.